And welcome back to more Pikmin! So last time, we began to explore the distant spring, so this time we're heading back there to collect a few more ship parts. First of all, I want to fight a boss, so I'm bringing along a hundred red Pikmin. Yesterday we actually cleared the path for the treasure, but it's really dangerous to actually bring the Pikmin this way because of how many ball bears there are and how much water there is. So instead, we're going to take an alternate path for the red Pikmin. Past these two ball bears is a branch, so we're gonna have them uh, go up here. And in the meantime, I'm going to have a few Pikmin work on something else. Past this ball bear here is a geyser to quickly gain access to this area. So, um, over here is another armored cannon beetle with a ship part. Um, so this should be pretty easy to defeat uh, with red Pikmin. It actually would be a little bit faster to fight it with blue Pikmin because we need the blue Pikmin to carry it back and thus just going into the fight with blue Pikmin means we would skip having to go back to the onion. Um, but the fight itself is really intimidating with blue Pikmin, just because of how uh, much less damage they can do against enemies. Red Pikmin being the best fighters uh, should be able to take out this boss no problem. I actually find the first throw the most scary, because if you miss the throw then the boulder will get launched and potentially crush a bunch of Pikmin all at once. But yeah, with red Pikmin, this fight is no problem. I've discovered the bowsprit. With this piece installed, my ship should regain some of its sleek shape. But first, uh, we need to go back to the onion now and swap over to the blue Pikmin. I am not sure where the missing red Pikmin is. I hope it's not uh, too far away. Um, it's probably by... wow, it's all the way over there, I guess. Um, I guess that's fine. Probably the puffy blowhog, uh, got to it. Um, that's the only assumption I can make. That definitely seems to be the case, um, based on the fact that it's currently Leaf Pikmin as well. Um, I don't think we'll have to fight it. I think it will mostly leave us alone, but we might as well, uh, just to keep it out of the way. Um, it is going dangerously close to the water, so let's be careful. Also, when it throws off the Pikmin, you have to be really careful in case they get thrown into the water. Uh, you have to just kind of be on guard for that. Um, that's a weird direction they're taking those in. Uh, I'm not sure why they didn't take them straight to the onion, but okay. Um, so, with that being taken care of, we now need to put these Pikmin away and bring out the blues. The blue Pikmin will have no problem uh, getting to the ship part and then taking it back. Um, I just don't trust the red Pikmin to avoid all of the ball bears in one piece. Um, so yeah, let's take a hundred blue Pikmin with us this time and uh, see what else we can find, because there are a couple more ship parts I would like to get today. Um, we also cleared the path to those as well. We defeated a couple uh, water dumples that were nearby, um, so it should be a straight shot to those as well. But first, I should collect this one. Uh, I might also pick up the armored cannon beetle itself. We don't really need extra Pikmin at this point, but we might as well go for a, a better end total. Uh, since the game does give you uh, a leaderboard for most Pikmin raised. So both take 30 with a maximum of 50 Pikmin able to carry them. Um, I'm not really concerned uh, concerned about time today because um, we frankly have more than enough time uh, to take care of everything I want to do today. Um, but just to uh, show some things off, there's a part right there and uh, there's a part over behind this wall, and then one behind uh, that area. So that'll be for tomorrow, all three of those. Um, for today, I want to go a little bit farther and collect this one on this ledge, and then uh, this one up here. 
both have some interesting techniques to get to both of them. So uh, luckily they're not too bad though, we definitely have plenty of time. Uh, but it is a good idea to devote a decent amount of time to collect both, uh, because it can be a little bit time consuming, specifically one of them, especially if you're uh, doing it the intended way. There is an unintended way that's a lot faster though, which I think I might be showing off. Bowsprit, the so-called face of the dolphin. In point of fact, I designed it. I have now recovered 24 out of 30 parts. If I can find just 5 more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Alright, so uh, let's go get those two uh, parts. The one looks a lot like the Ionium Jet, and actually takes the same amount of Pikmin, but I actually recommend uh, bringing way more than 15 for this. Um, so let's start with this one. Basically, uh, we have to toss Pikmin up onto this ledge over here near this geyser, and then ride the geyser up and then throw the Pikmin to the part. Um, as a result, it is a good idea to bring more than 15 in case some fall off the ledge. Um, but for the most part, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I find these ship parts good to go after early, just because they're kind of far away. Um, they definitely take a long time to carry back, uh, compared to some of the others. In general, I feel like the Distant Spring is probably the biggest area, and the most spread out in terms of uh, part locations and um, overall uh, hazards as well. It feels like the other areas are, are a lot more condensed, if that makes sense. Uh, but here, uh, we are going to toss the Pikmin up onto this ledge. Now, what you're supposed to do is toss Pikmin up onto this little platform, uh, change them into yellows with the Candy Pop Bud, and then use the yellow Pikmin uh, to bring this part down, and then swap over to Blues uh, to carry it through the water. That is quite a lengthy ordeal though, so I am not going to do that. I am going to show off a different method that's a little bit faster and actually pretty cool, I think. Um, I don't know if I actually read the description for that part, so um, before they get back to the ship, I think I might double check actually, uh, just to be on the safe side. I found my number 2 Ionium Jet. It's easy on the eyes, and its fuel efficiency is easy on the budget. And it's almost back as well. Number 2 Ionium Jet. The ads for these jets boast that with excellent mileage that's easy on the family budget, this jet will keep your wife smiling and propel you to a happy home life. I've now recovered 25 out of 30 parts. If I can find just 4 more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. We can leave those Pikmin for now, uh, we have more than enough. But uh, let's wake up one of these bull bears. I usually wake up this one because it's the closest to, to our goal. Um, so we want to lure it into this corner, and then uh, run up this ramp, and then run against this wall. If you run up against this wall at just the right point, when the ball bear attacks, it will actually push you up to this ledge. Um, and now we're basically out of bounds. So there is an, an invisible wall, so there's no fear of falling off into the void. And now we have to walk along here um, to the Pikmin we tossed up here earlier. And now we don't need yellow Pikmin uh, to collect this, so we saved a lot of time by just flat out skipping a puzzle, basically. I'm gonna double check the ball bear first of all to make sure it actually went back to sleep. Uh, it did not, so it's, go it's a good thing I checked. Um, so let's see what this is. But yeah, using yellow Pikmin and then swapping back and forth just takes so much time. I found my Kronos Reactor. Using strange new technology, this machine is able to warp the space-time continuum and turn it into energy. I am constantly amazed at how many mysteries are locked inside the parts of my ship. But yeah, uh, collecting this in the intended way, I would recommend devoting 
a lot of time just for the Pikmin to sprout, even. Um, I suppose a, a slightly faster method would be to toss yellow Pikmin from the shore over to the uh, little island here. I think that is possible on GameCube, but it would be a little bit easier on Wii because of the cursor going farther. By the way, um, this little out-of-bounds trick also works on uh, Wii just as a heads-up. Uh, I mean GameCube. Um, so yeah, most glitches actually work on both versions, which is kind of nice and kind of inconvenient at the same time, depending on the glitch. Like the crushing glitch being in both versions is kind of bad. But this glitch, uh, and other like speedrun related glitches being uh, retained across versions make it uh, really convenient to speedrun either. I know day uh, 7 or 7 day runs of both games are possible, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm not sure which is actually easier. I also think Pikmin 2 might have some glitches that were removed, but I am not 100% sure on that. So in the meantime, we're gonna go fight some more enemies. Over here are some Shearwigs, and a gate. I double-checked, and we do have to tear down this gate, by the way. Um, so I'm debating if I should use blue Pikmin, or if I could just swap over to yellow Pikmin and use bombs. Um, we could use bombs for something else as well, so it might be a good idea to try that. Um, so let's make our way back to the landing site. Uh, the Cronus Reactor... Cronus Reactor. This reactor changes permutations in the space-time continuum into pure energy. Basically, it's like a big rubber band. I have now recovered 26 out of 30 parts. If I can find just three more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. I was just about to say the Cronus Reactor should be back by now, and lo and behold it was. Um, so yeah, really quickly I am going to swap over to the Yellow Pikmin and uh, try to find some bombs really quickly to take care of a few things. I might actually defeat this ball bearer, uh, because it is kind of in the way. Um, the other one is much easier to get around, so uh, yeah, I might fight this one and then use the remaining bombs to uh, take care of that wall. Um, so we're putting away all these Pikmin and we're gonna make our way um, somewhere. There are a couple places we could get bombs at this point. Um, there's the place we checked out yesterday, past this bridge. Uh, but there's another supply over here that's actually closer to the wall, so let's go there instead. Um, so, another thing worth noting is there are dwarf bulb orbs. Uh, there's a dwarf bulb orb variant of the uh, bulb bear as well. Um, the dwarf bulb bears show up at a later day, kind of like these swooping snitch bugs in the um, Forest of Hope. So, I can't actually remember the last time I've seen a dwarf ball bear in this game, if I'm being honest. Um, normally I get through the distance spring way too fast for that to be a problem. Um, this should only take four bombs, maybe five, I'm actually not sure. Uh, another thing you can try is toss a bomb at this wall. Um, this is how uh, speedruns get by this wall. Um, but I'm not feeling brave enough to attempt that at the moment, so I'm simply going to head back and use the remaining bombs to um, defeat a few enemies. And by a few, I think only one, actually. Um, so, let's take three Bomb Rock Pikmin and then leave the rest over here uh, at a safe distance from the Ball Bear. But yeah. Uh, to reiterate, I really do like how more enemies show up uh, as the days go by, even if it means that quite often on uh, fast runs like this, you won't see quite a few enemies, um, unless you're actively returning to previous areas. I'm not even sure when dwarf ball bears start to appear. I think it's, it's like day 12, but I'm not 100% sure. This might take, uh, four bombs, but I could also just punch it. Um, for the sake of saving a little bit of time, I think I will just use up a bomb here. Um, another, another thing worth noting is there is a wall over here that I could bomb. I'm not going to, though, because, um, 
This one causes the Pikmin to carry certain ship parts through this area with a bunch of Wallywogs, and that's a lot more dangerous than going the other way. Even though this is a shorter pathway, um, it's just a lot more of a headache trying to fight all the Wallywogs along the way. So, um, we made pretty good progress today. We got the three uh, parts that I was hoping to get, and we defeated one of the enemies, the most uh, important enemy to defeat, because this ball bear, uh, we can actually just distract with Olimar. Um, basically, if you press 2, um, around here, the ball bear will just continually attack Olimar and will ignore any Pikmin passing by. So, this one uh, is not a problem, thankfully. But with that, uh, I think we are uh, pretty much set to collect the rest of the ship parts in this area tomorrow. Uh, so pretty good levels of progress overall. Ten days since impact. If I can find just four more parts, the dolphin will be fully rebuilt, but time has grown short. It must not flag in my search. Even if I cannot recover every piece, I will not give up. Surely some of those parts aren't absolutely necessary. I can almost see my smiling family. So, uh, time has grown short, he says, as he has 20 days left to collect four ship parts. But in any case, that wraps up Day 10. So next time, we'll be returning to the Distant Spring one last time to collect the final three ship parts. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Pikmin.